This is Laura London, and you're listening to Speaking of Jung. Returning to the podcast for episode 92 to discuss BTS's 2021 United Nations General Assembly speech is the author of Jung's Map of the Soul, Jungian analyst Dr. Murray Stein in Zurich, Switzerland. He holds a Master of Divinity from Yale Divinity School at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, and a PhD in Religion and Psychological Studies from the University of Chicago. He trained as a Jungian analyst at the C.G. Jung Institute Zurich, and later co-founded the Jung Institute of Chicago, where he worked as a training analyst. Dr. Stein served as president of the International Association for Analytical Psychology, known as the IAAP, and the International School of Analytical Psychology, known as ISAP Zurich, where he currently works as a training and supervising analyst. Among his many books are Minding the Self, Practicing Wholeness, and The Principle of Individuation. His Map of the Soul book series for young adults was published in four volumes by Chiron. A full list of his publications, including his three-volume collected writings, interviews, and DVDs, can be found on our new Murray Stein page in the blog. Our previous episodes about BTS date back to 2019, when Dr. Stein joined me to discuss his book, Jung's Map of the Soul, in episode 42, in anticipation of the release of the BTS album, Map of the Soul Persona. We later recorded additional episodes on Jung's concepts of the persona, shadow, and ego as we looked into BTS's music from a Jungian perspective. Please visit Speaking of Jung's BTS page at speakingofjung.com for links to all seven of Dr. Stein's episodes on BTS and for more information on everything discussed in this episode. This interview is being recorded on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, through the magic of Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Stein. Glad to be with you, Laura. This week, BTS traveled from South Korea to the United States to participate in the United Nations General Assembly. As the Republic of Korea's special presidential envoys for future generations and culture. The UN launched a new digital campaign last week called Keeping the Promise, calling on people around the world to make a promise to take action for a better future for all of us. Users are being asked to choose from 11 promises inspired by the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. You're going to hear a lot about that. The world's to-do list to protect the planet and all its people. And each of the members spoke at the UN General Assembly Hall on Monday morning to participate in this SDG moment, which was designed to call attention to the Sustainable Development Goals. The president of the Republic of Korea, President Moon Jae-in, and BTS kickstarted the UN General Assembly to spotlight the SDGs, which were actually signed back in 2015 in Paris in an effort to achieve peace and prosperity for people and the planet. Well, my first introduction to uh, BTS was watching um, them in the UN. This must have been in 2018 or or so, when uh, RM made a a very impressive speech about uh, about himself and uh, referred to uh, the problems of being celebrity and holding on to his uh, own identity uh, during all the commotion that's created by being famous and um, and so much in the in the limelight. And uh, after that, um, they recorded those albums on Map of the Soul, which, as you say, I commented on, and I found were very um, helpful uh, for people to be um, introduced to uh, some of the important concepts of in Jungian psychology, helpful concepts that really help people live their lives in a more responsible way and in a more uh, upbeat way, I would say, in a more optimistic way. And, um, and that's really the message of BTS um, in this general uh, assembly meeting. And, and generally speaking, it's very optimistic and upbeat. And I would say uh, counters 
a prevailing zeitgeist, which some people have described as um, extinction anxiety. Mm. Um, extinction anxiety, if you don't know what that, if you aren't familiar with that term, is um, postulated to exist throughout the world today um, in light of what's going on in uh, with climate change and and the change in our environment and uh, the whole question of sustainability can the human can the human species survive under these conditions and this has created a lot of anxiety in the world and this anxiety is being expressed uh, in the United Nations and uh, uh, the, the um, nations leaders are being asked to um, to provide uh, some leadership on uh, possibilities for curbing um, and reducing uh, the amount of climate change that has been uh, put in place by the way we live, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the messages um, I heard in uh, the uh, presentation by BTS was uh, countering this um, fear of extinction and um, uh, they, they're speaking to their generation, the younger generation, teens and people in their 20s, the Z generation. And they're saying uh, that they don't want to see it as COVID's lost generation. And they came up with a very interesting um, uh, alternative. They said, we want to call it the welcome generation. So I'd like to reflect on that a little bit. What is the welcome generation and what, what do they have in mind with that uh, moniker? Um, when I watched the, uh, uh, the recording of their uh, presentation at the UN, I was struck by the imagery. First of all, there are seven of them. Uh, they came onto the stage and um, RM, of course, takes the central position. He's up in the podium. And to his left are three of the members, and to his right are three of the members. And um, he's elevated a bit. Um, they're standing on the stage. And in front of them, they have two posters that represent some of the experiences that they've collected from their fans uh, about how their fans have coped during this period of time of the pandemic. Um, but this image of the seven of them standing there um, came to me uh, uh, as a, a kind of um, bird or butterfly, two wings and an elevated head. Um, and um, I think they, they, um, it captures something of their spirit. Um, what their spirit is, there are seven of them. They all spoke. Um, in a sense, they speak as one, mm -hmm. and yet they each are different. And what they represent is diversity uh, and unity. Unity in diversity, diversity in unity. Um, there is space to be different, but they're on the same page. They're working together. And when you see them dance, it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. uh, how, they, how they work together. And yet each one is doing uh, their own thing. Uh, and so this notion that um, the world in general, this is one of the, another anxiety about globalization, that we all lose our identities and get sucked up or swallowed up into a kind of amorphous, mass without uh, individual identity. Um, a message that they're presenting is um, you can belong to a community and you can be unified and still be individual, still be have your own uh, specific identity. And I think that's a extremely important message to be um, putting out there um, in, in, the, in the riven world that we're living in where the divisions run so deep um, and people um, feel that um, either you're a winner or a loser. You can't be a part of a totality without uh, losing your value. Um, the, um, 
the, the BTS message is um, quite clear that um, we can be part of a whole um, and still maintain our soul, um, our individuality and our specific um, uh, uh, looks and charm and uh, um, uh, genetic makeup and uh, psychological identity and history. That sounds like Jung's concept of individuation. Uh, that's what I'm using. Uh, that's in the background of my mind, uh, exactly, that um, individuation uh, is a journey to wholeness. And um, wholeness is an attempt to include, not exclude, mm -hmm. uh, parts of the self. It's very difficult to do, uh, not to uh, repress or dismiss or shut out parts of the self. Um, and um, what BTS is advocating um, in their speech speeches and in their song, uh, um, Permission to Dance, which I want to comment on a bit, mm -hmm. um, they, um, they're advocating this um, notion of inclusiveness. Um, that um, I think that's what uh, the welcome generation uh, signifies when um, RM says, um, I hope that in this nascent new world, we can all say to each other, welcome. Yes. Um, all say to each other, welcome. You're a part of the whole. Um, and um, they make um, sort of passing comments on against, let's say, racism, um, uh, uh, for um, generosity of spirit toward people who have different gender preferences, the LGBT movement, um, uh, all in the name of inclusiveness. I think that's what they're aiming at with this notion of the welcome generation, that this is going to be a generation of inclusiveness um, and tolerance of difference while uh, maintaining a sense of wholeness. Another thing I noticed, um, you were mentioning how the seven of them were lined up on that green marble podium in the United Nations General Assembly Hall. Something I noticed, and I'm using the photo of them for this episode, is the United Nations logo is over their heads and it's a huge circle and the first thing i thought of uh was look at that gigantic mandala mm -hmm. over their heads and speaking of mandalas each of them as well as the president and, and everyone there i think wore a lapel pin which is a circle with a circle cut out in the middle and it's segmented into 17 different colors, one for each of the SDGs. And those pins are available on the United Nations website uh, in their shop. I will provide a link to it in the show notes. Uh, you can, they're very affordable. Purchase one of these lapel pins with the 17 colored sections. Mm, wonderful. Um, so I think they, they are definitely, um, they've been enlisted to be a uh, presidential envoys. Um, and I think they take their job very seriously. Uh, this is the third time that, they're, uh, that they've appeared at the UN, and this is probably the most significant appearance so far. Um, as I listened to their, um, their talks, and they handed the microphone from one to another, it was a kind of dance. It was fun to watch them uh, sharing the microphone, which they do beautifully, and nobody is trying to claim centrality, but they all, I think, recognize RM as their spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So there is a kind of center to the mandala. But um, my thought was um, that they are um, demonstrating uh, their uh, commitment to, uh, to this mission that they've been given by the uh, South Korean government. They're taking it very seriously. And they want to bring a, a message, as RM says, they want to bring a message to uh, 
not only the new generation, but to the our generation who have uh, been living uh, for a considerable number of years beyond theirs at this point, the day is not over that, that um, uh, we're not um, necessarily about to descend into a grievous um, negredo state or um, darkness. Um, now, of course, during COVID, there has been a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. uh, the suicide rates among young people has skyrocketed. Um, uh, many um, psychotherapist practices are full to overflowing with people who need treatment for anxiety and depression, sleeplessness. Um, uh, it's good for business in one sense, but it's it's been a very um, a dark period. Um, I talked earlier about the um, um, the dark uh, the dark world, the uh, Negredo period that we uh, entered um, shortly after BTS released their Black Swan yes. song. Um, which was synchronistic. It was just on the cusp of the announcement that um, this pandemic was um, going beyond its uh, borders in China and reaching out into Europe and other places. So uh, it's been a very dark time. And um, in the individuation journey, you mentioned individuation, Laura, mm -hmm. um, and it is a, a journey that has a, a goal, but there are also episodes um, and transitions in the journey. And um, uh, they almost all have to do with um, what we call the archetype of death and rebirth, uh, where um, the, the dark night descends and uh, one goes into a state of isolation withdrawal often, um, um, introspection, um, and um, one is um, uh, rather overwhelmed often by material that surfaces from the unknown inner world, the collective unconscious. Um, and one goes through this, through this dark period. Um, but the good news is that it's transformative. And um, in some senses, um, the worse it is, the better the outcome, the possible outcome, because in order to make a big change, uh, what we call a transformation in life, um, one has to go pretty deep uh, into that dark place and um, experience um, the um, dark night of the soul, as it's sometimes called, um, and experience the um, scary parts of one's own inner world, the fantasies that come up, and the um, images that come up in dreams and so on. We work with this regularly in analysis. Um, and then, uh, after a period of time, that yields to what Marie-Louise von Franz uh, called the um, Aurora Consurgence. Aurora Consurgence is the title of her first major book. It's on an alchemy text that was attributed to Thomas Aquinas. The title is Aurora Consurgence. And what that means is rising dawn. And um, in the um, alchemical framework, uh, what happens is that uh, a light begins to break. It's dawn. Night is giving way to the dawn, and there's a kind of lightning um, of the sky in the east, and that was called albedo, the whitening. Um, and then that's followed by the rising of the sun. That's called rubedo, and um, that's the uh, uh, that combination, albedo to rubedo, is the Aurora Consurgence. Um, and as I listened to BTS, that came to mind because they're talking about um, uh, positive energy, a new world, um, the, uh, this future, 
um, a, a new message, message of welcome, nascent new world. It's a rebirth. Um, a nascent new world is a reborn world. Um, and what this will mean if the process is successful, uh, the transformation process is, is successful, is that SDG will become more possible because people will have changed as a result. Um, and I think we can see that uh, uh, in our own lives, individual lives, uh, the way we make our choices, what we're choosing. Um, BTS has chosen to vaccinate. They're encouraging other people to vaccinate, getting over our fears. Um, and there's a kind of brightening of the sky. And I think this um, BTS, uh, um, appearance and performance is a signal, uh, to my mind at least, that um, there is a possibility of a, of a brightening ahead and a real change of how um, human beings um, live on this planet. It has to take place. Um, and this new generation um, is charged with um, uh, leading um, and certainly enforcing, reinforcing, and promoting um, uh, the kind of change that uh, human beings have to make in order to um, sustain themselves on this planet. Uh, you mentioned suicide. I am going to be recording an episode on Saturday with Dr. David Rosen, who I think you know. Oh, yes, I know very well. Yes, mm -hmm. and he wrote that book, Transforming Depression, in which uh, he talks about his concept of ego side. And I remember asking you about that uh, on our episode about the ego, and you suggested that I speak with Dr. Rosen about it. So finally, we're going to record an episode on Saturday, which will be episode 93, about he did research on, on failed suicide attempts. and. Yes what those individuals went through and realizing that they needed to experience an ego death instead of a literal death. So we're yes. going to be discussing that. And then the vaccine, I I did an episode a few months ago with Beverly Zabriskie, who I'm, I'm sure you know as well. And yes. Yes. And afterwards we were chatting and she mentioned, you know, and I was, this was early on and I was not sure if I wanted to get the vaccine. Uh, this was before I knew as much as I know today, but she said, you know, it's like the snake bite, something about getting the poison for, in order to heal. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was, you know, um, it was a, a belief among, uh, what we call primitive peoples who are very unprimitive in many ways and smarter than we are. But yeah. what their beliefs, uh, their thoughts was that um, the poison of the, of the snake um, uh, has, it can have healing properties if you um, contain it properly. The snake has it, but isn't poisoned by it. And it right. makes the snake immune to poison. So if you take some of that, um, it might make you immune to poison too. And this is, I guess, the idea of inoculation. It's not really. The inoculation, uh, the vaccination, does not give you the illness, but it, um, it uh, stimulates your, mm -hmm. uh, your immune system in such a way that it can fight off the virus when it comes to you. Uh, they, don't, they aren't giving you viruses. Uh, they're giving your, your immune system a boost um, or a signal, and then it can prepare itself for the virus when it comes. But people are very afraid of putting stuff into their body that they don't know about for sure. What is this stuff? And, and I understand their anxieties. Um, for myself, I had no question whatsoever I would take the vaccine when it was available. <clears throat> but um, I'm of an age where that's necessary. I guess younger people felt they had more of a chance if they got the virus to recover from it. Um, about ego side, um, I, I would just, um, uh, uh, I'm sure David will, will give you a full rendition on, on what he means by ego side. Um, but um, uh, a lot of people who come to the point of wanting suicide, wanting to commit suicide, feel that they um, 
they have to change things dramatically and they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an attempt to make a huge change. Um, unfortunately, it's, uh, there's no recovery from it to our knowledge, but um, uh, I think it is an attempt uh, to, to create a, a stimulate a transformation. And um, what, uh, what I'm suggesting is that even things like pandemic might be significant, might have meaning for the human race if it gives us that uh, additional boost to, to change our lives um, in ways that are going to be very important for the next generations right. uh, if they're going to survive. Mm -hmm. So it, it may be um, an assist. Uh, um, COVID might be an assist to make us conscious mm -hmm. of how fragile our lives are, you know, how much we're, you know, skating on thin ice on our planet and um, we need to take some actions. What BTS says in their talk um, res uh, felt to me very much out of a good ego, a good solid ego position that's looking at reality. They, they're saying about their generation, look, we're resilient. We can take it. We can fall down and we can stand up. Um, we can make decisions and choices that will um, make for a better future. All this is ego talk, but ego in the good sense of ego. We have to make decisions. We have to make choices. We can't just keep coasting along. And so what a strong ego can do, and I think they learned this somewhere along the way, or their writers know it, uh, what a strong ego can do is um, register the anxiety. Anxiety has a value and that gives you a, a sense of urgency about something, uh, but um, you, uh, it isn't so overpowering that you can't act. Um, and they're saying, look, our generation can act. We are resilient, we are strong. So they are very much um, uh, promoting strong ego, which they did in some of their songs earlier. Yeah. Yeah. The ego isn't just selfishness. It's uh, the ability to contain, the ability to act, the ability to make sane choices. Um, um, and not simply uh, give way to uh, emotion um, that can be, you know, overwhelming fear, or flight or fight um, type of emotions, but be able to think clearly. All of that belongs to ego health. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I would like to mention uh, one more thing about something you said. You were mentioning the image of the butterfly when you were looking at BTS up on the podium there. And you mentioned the butterfly. And that reminds me of your book based on your Fay lecture series. It's titled Transformation. And there is a butterfly on the cover. And that actually also ties into Dr. Rosen's concept, I think, of egocide, which is that uh, suicidal individuals are requiring a transformation. So I will put a link to your book, Transformation, in the show notes for this episode. Thank you very much. Yes, the butterfly is a wonderful symbol for me of um, a transformed personality. That is somebody who's gone through this uh, metamorphosis. You know, the, the butterfly is a transformed version of the caterpillar. Caterpillar crawls along the ground, rather nasty looking thing. Um, but it has potential in it. Um, and at a certain point, the, the, the climate or sunlight or something signals the cocoon to uh, build itself um, a chrysalis. Uh, um, the, the caterpillar builds a cocoon, climbs into it, and inside dissolves, almost disappears. It just becomes fluid. But what emerges are... Um, some genetic materials that are there from the beginning and they grow and what they grow into is the wings and the new form that the butterfly takes. And then the butterfly has to break out of the cocoon, out of the chrysalis, uh, push its way out, dry its wings in the sun, and then it can fly. And then it is what we know as the butterfly, mm -hmm. that beautiful multicolored 
um, insect that flits around and is light as air and just the opposite of the caterpillar. Caterpillar couldn't dream of flying. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the, the uh, BTS are so colorful too and so light, so light on their feet. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say a few words about the, uh, the way they concluded their talk. Mm -hmm. um, they're dressed, of course, all in a suit and tie and they all dressed alike. Um, practically uniforms, but they wear, um, wear them well and they don't look like they're uh, in a military style at all. Uh, and of course, they all have different looks and their hair are different colors and so on. Um, and then um, after their talk was concluded, they said uh, uh, that they wanted to um, show a film that they had just made uh, to the audience at the UN. and. Uh, down comes a screen and then you see this film and it's astonishing. Uh, this film brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They, they actually filmed that right after they landed in New York city. They Amazing. filmed it inside the general assembly hall and then outside. Yes. It moved me very, very, very much. Very touching. And it's like an outburst, a magnificent outburst of exuberance. Mm -hmm and energy and uh, you see them emerging uh, slowly one behind the podium then another then they're all there and then they go dancing through the empty hall and, yeah. and they emerge through a tunnel and they come out into this open space and um, they um, are singing and dancing and then they're joined by a, a large group of other people um, to me that was pure anima. Mm. Um, you know, the anima is the archetype of life, as Jung calls it. When you're without anima, you're dead, <laughs> dead in the water. You have no energy, you have no enthusiasm, you have no will to live. Um, the anima is the life energy that bursts uh, out of the shell. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're bursting out of a shell into this exuberance of life. And it's a dawn, New York City skylight yes. in the background. Um, uh, it's magnificent uh, expression of um, this kind of uh, assertion of freedom. Mm -hmm. I have some questions about the freedom that they take themselves. They say, we don't need permission to dance. And there's a, some pictures of people throwing off their masks and so on. But I think it's a healthy youth. Uh, it's a very youthful spirit that they are wanting to encourage and um, very upbeat and um, pro, uh, you know, life in this world is, has great possibilities. It's not over. Let's dance. And they feel the music, and get everybody going. It's um, really a, a wonderful conclusion of their message. Um, at the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And toward the end of their speech, uh, the seven of them, I noticed that they were using the word choice and choices yeah. and making choices. And the very last thing RM said was uh, that the permission to dance is our message of welcome that we want to share with everyone today. That's right, the message of welcome. And um, and you see in that group of people that joins them dancing, it's very inclusive, mm -hmm. racially, ages, sizes, looks, colors. <laughs> um, it's really um, the generality. It's the totality of represents um, um, you know, the totality of human life. Yeah, and that, that lapel pin now is making more and more sense to me. It's a circle, uh, so it's continuous, and it's all different colors and mm -hmm. in a circle. So um, I, I can understand that symbol a little bit better now. And these sustainable development goals, the UN actually has a website about it, which I'll provide a link to in the show notes. And they are a call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, achieve gender equality, and to call out hate speech and racism. And that's another thing we haven't touched on yet is uh, that 
the BTS members have mentioned it before. They mentioned it at the UN about calling out hate speech and racism. And I was wondering why that seems to be so much at the forefront today. Well, it certainly um, has been um, uh, a big issue in the United States uh, since COVID began because um, uh, some uh, political leaders who will go unnamed uh, refer to this as the China, the China virus. And so there was a lot of, um, you know, really blatant uh, uh, attacks on uh, Asian people in the streets and of the cities and so on. Uh, so, you know, there's the, the black and white um, racial issue. There's the Asian um, Euro European issue. Um, and of course, they're coming from Korea. And um, as Koreans um, in the United States, uh, people don't know who they are and they're walking down the street, they could get some um, words thrown their way or some you know, unpleasant looks. I was born here in the United States. I was actually born in New York City. And I don't ever remember, and I know racism has always been an issue, but I don't ever remember it being at the level that it's at right now. I mean, the awareness is at the level and that things had gotten so bad. And I was just kind of wondering what's underneath that. Uh, I, I just d didn't want to get through this episode without mentioning racism because this is part of the SDGs. Yes. And it's, uh, you see, the, the, um, the idea of um, the welcome generation is moving against that. Right. Uh, that racist idea of which what racism says is that, um, you know, there, uh, there are, um, there's our side and there's yours. It's a type of splitting mm -hmm. in psychological terms. It's a splitting and projection operation. So if you're on my side and you're my color and so on, my race um, um, are in solidarity and the others are out there and we project the shadow on them. And so there's a splitting. Now, what's happening in our world today uh, is um, splitting all over the place. Uh, it's, it's an era of splitting psychology. So you have left and right extremes um, sharpening. And uh, sometimes they're sharp, they sharpen along racial lines, sometimes along national lines, nationalistic us and them. You, you create walls and boundaries. Well, the welcome generation wants to speak against that. They want to say, you're all welcome. Everybody is a part of the whole. And, um, and uh, really what works uh, against racism uh, is the, the notion of respect. If you can respect the other in their difference, and I'm sure within the seven of BTS, within the group, they have to come to that themselves to respect the differences because they are different. I don't know what their gender preferences are, uh, but they may be mixed. Um, uh, they certainly dress differently, color their hair differently. They're very androgynous. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, they aren't male and they aren't female. They're, 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 com they're a combination. Androgyny is a, uh, is a symbol of, um, of, uh, of the self because the self contains the opposites. So if you don't uh, identify strongly uh, with one side of the gender spectrum or the other side, but locate your somewhere, yourself somewhere in between, you have a chance of integrating the opposites and holding them together. And so their androgyny also symbolizes the self like a mandala mm -hmm. symbolizes the self. And um, it's, it's it's the lack of splitting. It's, it's instead of splitting, you have the conjunctio, the mysterium conjunctionis that Jung wrote about, which holds the opposites together. And, and the net result of that individuation process, as it's shown in uh, alchemy and uh, some of the pictures, is that the male and female come together and they form a hybrid, uh, an androgynous being called the rebus. Uh, that's a being with one body and two heads, male and female. That means you've got both sides, uh, animus and animus, uh, connected within your 
psyche and you aren't splitting and projecting. Um, so I think racism is a part of this splitting projecting phenomenon that is a part of a regression, a cultural regression. Uh, when individuals regress, they tend to split, they withdraw, they project, cultures do the same thing. Um, but that's also a part of the transformation process mm -hmm. and uh, it's mm -hmm. not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Once you get those two opposites um, uh, clearly defined, there we say hold the opposites, hold the tension of the opposites, um, a third thing will appear eventually that's neither one nor the other, but that they'll both be able to uh, join into uh, a third thing, as we call it, or this rebus phenomenon that will be uh, will either fully represent one side or the other side, but will combine them in a new um, distribution or formula. And that's what we have to look for in the, in the next generations that uh, uh, Jung wasn't very optimistic toward the end of his life that yes. human beings would survive, but um, uh, uh, because he felt uh, humans weren't mature enough to handle something as powerful and explosive as atomic energy, atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. He just didn't see that human beings had that capacity at this point and was worried that you know, irresponsible leaders would get their hands on <laughs> these weapons and start playing games with them and would lead to a total destruction, which it could still do. Um, but if we uh, are to survive, there has to be um, an advance of consciousness that can hold the opposites together and not split, um, but give due regard to both and respect both men and women, black and white, um, um, my country and your country, <laughs> all these points of conflict and difference. Um, now, the United Nations was an early attempt to create this. You know, mm -hmm. you think of the idea of the United Nations. It came to birth after the Second World War. There had been an attempt after the First World War that failed um, um, badly in the 30s when countries pulled out of it, the League of Nations. Uh, but after the Second World War, they, the leaders saw that such an amount of destruction had taken place with this, uh, you know, war around the world in every country practically of the world, war was being waged, that they decided to try to found a, an institution that would bring all the nations of the world into one place. They chose New York City as that place, and they built on the plaza in New York, they built the United Nations. That certainly had its ups and downs, but in its heyday, Eleanor Roosevelt was there, and you know, she was a rep United States representative to the first one, I think, to the United Nations. And uh, really, a Doug Hammarskjöld, great individuals have taken part in that um, effort to have a place where people can come together, discuss, share, uh, have dialogues in a respectful way, mm -hmm. respecting differences. Mm -hmm. Muslim. Hindu, Christian, Jew, doesn't matter. Everybody is welcome there. Yes. So this welcome is part of the United Nations and so appropriate that they would announce the welcome <laughs> vision mm -hmm. uh, right there. Uh, BTS is really on the mark, I must say. Yes, yes, I agree. And I would like to add that in addition to their speech at the UN, uh, BTS and the President of the Republic of Korea spoke with the UN's Under Secretary General for Global Communications, Melissa Fleming, about their commitment to help advance progress through the United Nations. And something that the President said that really struck me, he said that BTS is returning the love they receive from their fans all over the world through spreading this positive influence to all. And that's why they were the best candidates, he said, to represent and speak up for younger generations, because mm. they are returning that love, the love 
that they get from ARMY. Uh, they're returning it by spreading it, spreading the positive influence to all, and they certainly have. So was there anything else you'd like to cover? One thought I had uh, just looking at them and reflecting on their presence there was the contrast with uh, Greta, who was there. Was it last year or the year before? Uh, the Swedish young woman, Greta Thurman. And there's that famous image of her staring at the President of the United States, making her speech there. And she brought uh, a message from the same generation, uh, the message of crisis and um, um, dire warnings and uh, commitment to change. Um, it was uh, um, very much in contrast to the way BTS presented. It's yeah. the same message. Um, but uh, with a very different color. Uh, the one is dark and gloomy and threatening, and the other one is upbeat and exuberant and hopeful. Um, I hope the people at the General Assembly and the leaders of the world do get the message. Uh, I think they do. Um, one thing that BTS acknowledged in their talk was the change is going to be difficult. Um, it's going to be costly, in some cases painful. But um, um, I think with their um, upbeat, uh, hopeful um, attitude, um, they, um, they really do contribute to uh, the desire to participate in that uh, uh, new world. It isn't just gloomy. Uh, it has mm -hmm. promised, mm -hmm. and that's what they're putting out there. The, the new world could be a wonderful, shining place, a place of creativity, and, um, uh, new possibilities, and a different kind of life. Yes, the creativity and the creative aspect is so important. And I think that, especially in our culture, men are not encouraged to be uh, creative in the, in the general sense. And one of the things that I love about BTS is, is how creative they are. And they don't just sing and dance. They also produce, they, they also put out these, um, these videos, the, this, uh, this series where they play and they cook and they paint and they oh. build things. And so the creativity is, it's it's a Jungian thing too that we're encouraged to be creative in that way. So yeah. I love that about them. Well, thank you so much for kind of an impromptu episode here. Uh, the message that BTS delivered was very important. So I do appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts with us. Please visit the website Speaking of Jung, that's J U N G dot com for more information on everything that was discussed in this episode. There you will also find all of the previous episodes of this podcast, which are available to stream or to download for free. This podcast is also available on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. And it will be available later in the week on our YouTube channel, Jungian Laura. You can also listen to this episode on your Amazon Echo device simply by saying, Alexa, play Speaking of Jung on Apple Podcasts. Just be sure to pronounce Jung with a hard J. Links to Amazon's new Echo devices can be found in the show notes. So with special thanks to Jennifer Fitzgerald at Chiron Publications, Carla Postma Slabicorn at the BTS Army Help Center, to the entire BTS Army, and to BTS, this is Laura London, and you've been listening to Speaking of Young.